our scripture reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 12. And as you will notice, this will be a repeat from last year's preaching, last September. I will read you Acts 12, verses 11 to 17. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together, praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a maid came and hearkened, her name was Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, You are the man. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It is an angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Holy One, on this first Sunday in October, we have gathered one more time to praise you. We come for a minute, we come for a moment. We have laid our burdens at the door. We have paused our lives and we have come to listen to your word. Father, open my mouth that I may speak your word, and that everyone can hear and will understand. Everyone will be able to learn, and they in turn can glorify your name. I speak these words in the name of Jesus. Amen. So last night, I said a prayer that God would help me to forgive those who laughed at me when I told them 10 years ago that I was going back to graduate school. And last night as I prayed, I remember sitting 10 years ago at that beauty salon when the lady next to me just laughed hysterically. She said at your age, and when will you ever finish? When will you ever graduate? So last night I prayed a prayer that we could all find the strength and all the courage in the world to forgive those who are not very kind to us. I also prayed that God would show her in a dream that the lady whom you laughed at 10 years ago is now preaching at the church. And as a matter of fact, she is the first woman pastor there in 300 years. So who has the last laugh right now? Last night I also prayed that God would keep me humble and he would keep my eyes focused on his word, to ignore the distractions, the false hope, the false notions, and unpleasant words that people say to me and to you when we are trying to make a better life for ourselves. Last night, I prayed on and on, and got lost in my prayers, because I wanted to wake up this morning feeling like a better person. 
person, a more forgiving and loving child of God. And I know that sometimes in your life you may have had similar occurrences, that you have told someone you were going to do something and they laughed. I wonder how that felt for you. Have you found it in your heart to forgive? So that was my prayer last night. And I don't know what you pray about and how you pray, why do you pray, and where you pray. And if you are ever embarrassed about praying in public, Maybe at a restaurant, when your food comes at your table, are you embarrassed to pray there? And do we let go of things and pray for health and healing for anybody? The scriptures tell us that Jesus resorted to a cave in the mountain. A cave in the Mount of Olives, and there he would pray. Jesus woke up early in the morning just to pray. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And when words were too much to repeat, Jesus wept. And he wept over Jerusalem. And as Christians, how many of us can live a life without ever saying a prayer? Despite what the critics say, they might say prayers don't work. I have heard that. The real question is, how else can we communicate with God without prayer? How else can we approach God without prayer? And as Christians, are we even aware that the power of prayer can dismantle the power of panic? And many centuries ago, a prayer was said in the dungeons of a prison in Jerusalem. It was a liberating prayer. Many on the back scene, behind the scenes, were also praying. And that night, God sent his angel down to earth to activate that prayer. It was a prayer that was said by Peter when he was bounded in prison. Peter, as we know, was the first disciple of Jesus. And after Jesus ascended back into heaven, the disciples continued to preach the gospel, but they encountered many persecutions along the way. They had a wicked king to deal with. His name was King Herod Agrippa. And he had already put to death James, who was the brother of Peter and John. Peter had two brothers along with him as disciples of Jesus, Peter, James, and John. They were the sons of Zebedee. And wicked King Herod apprehended Peter and cast him into prison. But it was around the time of Passover, which we now call Easter, Peter was thrown into prison awaiting when Passover was over that King Herod would put him to death. And in prison he prayed and prayed. And we know that the angel of the Lord came into the prison, woke Peter up. It was an angelic encounter in real time. It took Peter a little while to realize what was happening. But the angel said, you are not dreaming. Wake up, this is not a dream. And I wonder how many of us in 2023 want to pray like Peter. Peter prayed when there was no way out. There were 16 guards guarding Peter in the prison that night. And we know that the angel came and liberated him from that prison. Notice first, he sang a song, and then he prayed. And as Christians, as we, uh, we are encouraged to keep on praying and never lose hope in the one who has our future in his hands. Even if we cannot 
see anything happening when we pray. We don't know what is happening behind the scenes. Because when we pray, our prayers go up to God. And I don't know how he answers prayers, but in his own time, he answers your prayers. A little known fact is, when we pray for others, we are also praying for ourselves. We get a share of their blessings. When we wish well for others, wellness also comes to us. And the story gets even more interesting. All the while that Peter was in prison, a group of people were also praying for him. And in Acts chapter 5 we read, Prayer was made without ceasing by the church unto God. They had already lost James, and they were praying fervently that Peter would not be the next one to be put to death. But Peter came and knocked on the door. And the people were in there praying. They could not even hear Peter knocking on the door until Rhoda came and opened up the door and she said, it is Peter outside. They did not believe because no one could escape the grief of the wicked king. So how would Peter be standing at the door? There were 16 guards, guard in the prison. They were sure that Peter was going to die. And Rhoda said, no, he's really at the door and he's knocking. Go see for yourself. They said to Rhoda, you are mad. We are sure that he's going to die. But instead, when they went to the door, there was Peter standing there. Peter said, I know for a surety that the hand of God has guided me. His prayers were answered and his life was saved. Wicked King Herod did not have the capacity to keep him down. Wicked King Herod could not hold Peter down in the prison. We know that the 16 guards were fast asleep when the angel came into the jail to release him. Rhoda affirmed them that indeed Peter was at the door. And when he continued to knock even, even harder, they opened the door. When they saw Peter, they were astonished. And Christian friends, the people of the church were, paid, were praying for Peter's life. And we can see that the angel of the Lord came and released him. When we pray, we know that our prayers go up to the Almighty and our blessings come down. We are to pray with confidence because when we pray in doubt, our prayers may get arrested. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, it's a very interesting chapter in the Bible that all Christians should read, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, Paul tells us that we were nothing. The Bible, or should I say, God recognizes two people. He always had a covenant with Israel. And you're either a Jew or a Gentile in the eyes of God. His covenant was never with us. If you are not a Jew from the land of Israel, you are a Gentile. All the covenants in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, was done with Israel, not with us. And as patriotic as he is, yes, he was born in Israel, our good Lord. And we were nothing. He said when we prayed in those days, all prayers were captured out in the stratosphere. That's a lot of theology. The power of the princes of the air, that's the devil, hijacked our prayers. 
we had no covenant with God. And our prayers remained right there. How many of us knew that? That's new learning. The devil blocked our prayers up there. Our prayers go up. We have to read Ephesians chapter 2. And then there was a turn. When Jesus died on the cross, the scripture says, but now. And after but, there is a comma. When we read the Bible, we have to look out for the punctuations. The scripture said, but now. There was one who died to save us. And with one drop of blood, everything changed. And now we are no longer aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. The Bible says that. No longer aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. It says that long sentence. You can read it for yourself. But now we are all one. When Jesus died on the cross, our prayers could now go up and reach heaven. The devil no longer had the power to block our prayers. Jesus led the way. And we know that for a fact that the night that he gave up the ghost on the cross, Matthew chapter 28 tells us that the veil of the temple was torn into pieces. Jews and Gentiles became one. There is nothing right now that can hold our prayers away from God. The coast is clear. All is made well. In the book of Hebrews, we learn Hebrews chapter 12, that now we are no longer aliens. We can come boldly. We can march into our prayer room and pray to God and know that our prayers will be answered. And when we pray and we approach God, we must first believe in our hearts that God exists. Why do our prayers not work? We must first believe, if you're going to come to God, you must first believe that He exists. And then He meets you halfway. Our, there's nothing to hold our prayers back. It's how we think, it's how we believe, it's what we say, it's how we say it, and where we say it, that's what matters. I'll let you chew on that for a little bit. That's a lot to take in. So we know that the people of the church were praying up in a house for Peter, and the Lord answered their prayers and sent an angel. Angels, as we know, will not come to us in heavenly robes with wings flapping. They are smarter than we are. If an angel was to appear right now, I guess we all would take off running, right? We would be so scared, it would make the news, it would be on CNN. They don't want that kind of drama. So they will use what we can identify with. We can identify with other humans. You will be on the highway, you may get a flat tire, somebody will come and help you. An ordinary person, that's your angel. You may be going through something difficult in your life, someone will step in and help, that's your angel, that's your earthly angel. They will come to you, but they will come in human form. Are we getting this? That that's what we can identify with. And that's how they come to us every day. And I know we all have many stories about things that has happened in our lifetime. And we know that people came in to help us. And we don't know how we came out of the situation, but we came out of it. Someone was always there. It could be your own family, a friend, a neighbor, a complete stranger. Somebody always comes in to help us. And that's our angel. Our God who is gracious, 
his own prayers. So never think that your prayers won't answer. A life of prayer creates a pathway for every human being to approach God. Prayer is a time when we can talk to God privately or openly. Prayer motivates us to always believe that when no one else hears, and when no one else understands, there is someone who will readily, readily listen and will be non-judgmental towards us. Prayer should be our first response in dealing with issues in our lives. And prayer is the correct pathway to talk to God. <laughs> prayer is the invisible dial, the dial tone, and the essential link that enables us to communicate at random with God. Through prayer, we can express our wishes, our desires, our concerns, and our fears, our jubilation and suffering to God. Prayer takes on a language of its own when it's uttered fervently, with emotion and heart. So when we pray, we have to put a little gusto in there. It takes on a language of itself. God sees us in our time when we are we are at our lowest and he comes to us. <clears throat> Prayer empowers our faith to believe in the Almighty. Prayer should summon us to gratitude and peacefulness. Without praying our lives, we are like a ship without a sail, and we are like clouds without rain. When we pray, what we say matters to God. Prayers may be simple also, but the attitude that we say our prayers in, it should give us a good motive that God is always there to listen to us. The power of prayer is dynamic. We should always remember that it is wise to approach God in prayer at our most troubling times and even when times are good in our lives. Always remember to pray for your children, your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Pray for your family and those around you. Are you aware who is praying for you this morning? And, at, and have you ever had a prayer answered immediately? Have you ever had an unanswered prayer? And how do you deal with that? And in closing, remember that you are in line this day to have your prayers answered. Whatever you've been praying for, this is the place to be. A blessing awaits you today. Pray with passion. Pray boldly. Pray 